Hi guys, this is H Summer, and today we're gonna make a mermaid tail together. You have probably seen it before on my Instagram. If you haven't, well, make sure that you subscribe. I'm gonna teach you three different ways, and make sure that you watch until the end because I'm gonna show you some fans that make their own mermaid tails using these techniques. So the first thing you need is a good fabric. It has to be um, from the active line. Anything that is lycra, neoprene, anything really that you would make a bikini, it's good for your tail. Make sure it's non-see-through, it's four-way stretch, and it doesn't fray when you pull it. This fabric here is the Mystic Blue from Joanne's Active Line. I really like it because the metallic gives the impression of scales under the water. You know, like fish is kind of metallic. Moving on, if anybody's making your tail, you're gonna need to send them some measurements. Get the circumference around your waist, hips, knees, ankles, and don't forget the height. If you're gonna make it yourself, it's a lot easier. All you need to do is to sit on a big paper, put your monofin on, and trace around your body. It's a lot easier when you have a friend to help you out and a great opportunity to have a mermaid tail maker potty, but I am by myself. All right, so for the fluke design, I don't know what happened to me because I was gonna make like a dolphin shape and instead I just made it straight. Trace your design from the paper on your fabric and cut around. Make sure that you cut two times, one for the front and one for the back. Now you're gonna put the front piece and the back piece with the wrong side facing out. And you're gonna sew both sides. You can use a zigzag stitch or you can do hand stitching. Since the fabric doesn't frail, you don't have to worry about your waist. And with the scripts of fabric, I made a bikini top and bottom, all hand stitched. Alright, now that you've learned the basic tail, we can go for the second technique and throw some shade. Okay, so usually, to get this effect, on professional tails you would need an airbrush. But half of the world population doesn't have one. So I thought, hmm, how can we make it more affordable? And here it is, spray paint. Not every spray paint paints fabric, so you have to read the instructions. I am using Cryolan Black. You can use any colors, I ask you on Instagram and most of you said that I should use black. Now for the fluke, it's a little bit more tricky and you need to draw on a paper exactly what you want. Use your creativity, there is no right and wrong, it's just personal taste. Just make sure that you make thick lines. And now you're gonna cut all the red lines off the paper, you're gonna leave only the white part, the part that you didn't paint. It is important to learn this technique because we're gonna use it in other tales ahead. Two hours later. So after I finish my pattern, I trace it on cardboard because it's a lot more resistant. You can kind of already see what's going to be. It is not complicated at all. But if you're not used to spray paint, I suggested that you train it before painting your tail. And here are some H.E. Summer tips for you. Don't spray it too close to the fabric. Don't spray for a long time the same area. Don't spray two times on the same spot. You also need to be outdoors and wear a mask. Beside those, there are many rules. And you can mix and match any colors. The only golden rule is that the stencil cannot move. Pretty easy, right? If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. And back to it. As you can see, I'm using a little bit of blue for the shading. And now do your best to make the same thing on the other side. If the other side wasn't 100% alike, don't be discouraged. Most fish have a difference between the belly and the back side. Just choose the prettiest side and put in the front. While your tail is drying, let's make the bottom fringe. You guys have asked me a lot how to make this fringe and I was thinking, how can I make this affordable? Plastic for shelves, bath curtains, and tablecloth. If you find a plastic one with these lines, it's even better. The first mermaid that I've seen with this bottom fringe was Mermaid Hannah, so here's a shout out for her. I've seen in person one of Mermaid Cariel's tail and it has the fringe painted, so I try to paint it <laughs> and it didn't work so this is a fail do not copy if anyone knows how to paint it please let me know I think you can only dye it cut the strip of the plastic and zigzag stitch on the bottom of your tail since the plastic is a little bit thick I recommend doing that on the machine and not by hand I don't know I think it just looks a little bit better you're going to put right side with the right side and sew on both sides 
On the waist, I usually just roll a little bit of the fabric to the inside. I usually don't really like the appearance of the elastic on the waist, but if you want to put it, you just have to do one more seam line. And for sewing, the ideal would be if you had a serger machine, but if you don't have it, you can just do a zigzag stitch on your regular machine or do it by hand. If you're doing it by hand, I suggested that you do it twice just to make sure that the seams are strong. If I am not mistaken, I read that the first tale of Mermaid Cat and Mermaid Cario were made by hand. Alright, so when you finish sewing, you can cut the fringe the way that you like. I was trying to accentuate the dolphin shape, but it didn't really show once all the fringe was cut. Two hours later. So once you're finished, your fringe will be perfect and clear like Mermaid Hannah's tail. I don't know if you have noticed, but I am leaving the bottom of the tail open and this is what I recommend for your first tail. It's a lot safer, easier to swim and easier to put it on and off and to storage. And to make sure that your monofin would never show, just put velcro on it. Alright, now your tail is ready to use, but let's go for the third technique with side fins and some extra fins. The more fins you put, the more fantastic it looks. While my tail was drying, I drew some fins on a paper and then traced it to the plastic. I made two ventral fin or pelvic fin, these in the belly, two side fins, and I also made two caudal fins, that means the fins on the ankles. I pinned them where I wanted and then zigzag stitched it in place. And added a little bit more fabric for a finishing touch, and that's it. And with the fabric scraps, I made another bra, and if you want a tutorial, just let me know in the comments. That's it! Your tail is now ready to be used! So, what type of tail do you like most? Is it a simple one? Is it with a fringe and some shading? Or is it with extra extra fins? Let me know in the comments! And as always, my social media is hsummerblog, and if you made anything based on any tutorial that I've made, please hashtag me hsummerblog so I can see it. Special thanks for Mermaid Liza, she has tried my tutorial and made two amazing tales with it. Thank you so much! And if you like mermaids and tritons, please subscribe to my channel, I'm gonna leave you with some playlists that you may enjoy.